Don't throw, slowly put it down. You prefer to try or to bake? Uh, fry. Fry, yeah. Even though you get oil in your house. Come eh, in un'orchestra che ognuno fa il suo piccolo e poi insieme viene fuori una melodia. Il cucinare insieme alla famiglia è stato molto più importante durante la pandemia perché eravamo già in una situazione complicata e etica, per cui abbiamo trovato conforto gli uni negli altri a fare qualcosa insieme come può essere il cucinare che è... So I started cooking it at home and soon I got very used to it and now it's my usual dish that I cook on Sunday mornings. Wing, 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 wing. Moon side up. This one your favorite? It's actually sunny side up, but you remove the yolk. The yolk is like the sun and then the rest is like space. Next one. This one. I enjoy most because we have each other to help us so that we won't feel too hard. I like best is the reward as eating the food. It's free and it's good. <laughs> The best burger patty is to mix it with your hands so that every part of the minced beef gets the seasoning. Smell the brains. The minced beef is soft and cold. Feels so satisfying. This is salt. Put some of the salt and pepper inside. We run a restaurant, so I mean during pandemic times when we had to close uh, for dining, it affected us uh, quite a bit as well. Me, 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 both of us. Okay, you both do it together. Go in with Stand your hands. Squish. Okay, let me take a photo. Before the pandemic, we would be working and then we would only at most come home for dinner but the pandemic allowed us to be at home a lot more. We could have lunch at home, I think it was one big thing already. Then we started cooking a lot more, we would cook for lunch, uh, and they would help out for dinner as well. Uh, so we cooked a lot more together. On normal days, we are quite busy, so we were thinking, this kitchen only opens during the pandemic, and then we're like, hey, there's our surname right there. So we decided to call it Pandemic Kitchen and just have some fun with it. It's not like we sell things out of it, it's just cooking together and having fun with it. The ricetta è una ricetta speciale perché avendo tanti passaggi da fare tutti insieme, cioè il fare le tagliatelle, mettere sul il ragù, se lo si fa tutti insieme si lavora meglio e si fa più veloce e si collabora e, e quindi per questo che è una ricetta che a me piace fare e, e la considero abbastanza speciale. Ah, me ne vado! Voglio vedere chi vi gira la mano verde. Non serve no, perché è un lavoro di fatica. Perché è un lavoro di fatica. Eh? Cioè ti viene un male al gomito, guarda che... Cioè, è pazzesco, eh. Poi non puoi più girare niente. Guarda. Eh? Le tagliatelle non sono un piatto tipico di Milano, o comunque della Lombardia. Uh, però nella nostra famiglia... Uh, c'era la mia bisnonna che era mantovana, quindi comunque 
eh, Mantova è molto più vicina all'Emilia che è il luogo di origine del, delle tagliatelle e hanno, a Mantova hanno una cultura del, del fare la pasta a mano molto forte nella loro tradizione con la bisnonna che poi l'ha tramandata alla nonna che l'ha detto poi a mia madre e lei una volta eh, durante la pandemia l'ha trasmessa anche a me questa cosa delle tagliatelle fatte a mano Se posso dare tre consigli per fare le tagliatelle fatte a mano in casa, consiglierei di prima di tutto utilizzare le uova a temperatura ambiente e non fredde di frigorifero, aggiungere un pizzico di sale all'impasto delle tagliatelle e di mescolarle con una mano sola di modo da avere l'altra libera per aggiungere eventualmente farina o per fare altro. Il segreto che si tramanda nella nostra famiglia è quello della bisnonna che suggeriva di aggiungere un pizzico di zafferano all'impasto delle tagliatelle per, le, per renderle più colorate e fragranti. Mm, è pronto! Mm. Mm, no, ancora... 30 secondi. E anche un filino di sale. Ma no, ma è salatissima. No, non è salatissima. When the whole pandemic started, I finally had time to kind of dwell into this hobby that I've always wanted to go into, which is doing home brew. Uh, rice wine is the one that I kind of fell into... Okay. So I'm basically going to lay the rice out for it to cool. This is definitely quite a time-consuming endeavor, but it's very manual rather than just sit in front of a screen working away. Um, this is kind of relaxing for me. It's very purposeful. I know why this step is needed. One thing that the pandemic has given is time at home, of course. But not only that, it, it, this, this also gives me time away from the computer. Everything has meaning when I'm doing this. It just helps me make sense of things and gives me space for my mind. What I'm about to do next is put a type of mold on the rice. I'll let the mold do its work by breaking down the rice into sugars. Then use yeast to turn sugar into alcohol. During the circuit breaker period when you can't really go out, right? You know, we were just having fun at home, you know. So so when I let's say when I make Izakaya food, he will make some highball to go along with it. Of course, we don't just end up with highball, we continue with a lot of other drinks. Yeah, but I, I think it was really fun. So it got us thinking, why are there no private bars when there are private kitchens? And so we decided to make our own one. I think I'm like really the biggest culprit in starting, like pushing him to start Section B. I've always been in hospitality as well, so I really enjoy hosting guests at home. And I thought like, why not um, start something like that so that, you know, uh, for, for Danon, he can have a chance to, to be creative, to come up with more drinks. And then um, I'm always the guinea pig. Yeah, and I'm very happy being, a, being one. <laughs> yeah. La vita a Milano durante la pandemia è stata abbastanza deprimente e brutta perché eravamo tutti chiusi in casa, non c'era nessuno per strada e non potevamo uscire. Se bisognava uscire per fare la spesa o per portare il cane bisognava farlo da soli, stando lontani da tutti gli altri. È stato pesante come situazione. Io ho sofferto abbastanza il fatto di non poter uscire di casa e di non vedere i miei amici e il mio fidanzato, però vabbè, non si poteva fare altrimenti. Ho passato molto tempo, cioè par gran parte della giornata la passavo a seguire le lezioni online dell'università, la restante parte della giornata la passavo a leggere magari dei libri perché ero già stanca di stare al computer perché avevo seguito le lezioni online. Mi sono messa anche a cucinare le, delle ricette 
non italiane, per esempio asiatiche, cinesi e giapponesi. Ho iniziato a cercare su internet e sui libri di cucina che avevamo a casa. Il cucinare insieme alla famiglia è stato molto più importante durante la pandemia perché eravamo già in una situazione complicata e drammatica per cui abbiamo trovato conforto gli uni negli altri a fare qualcosa insieme come può essere il cucinare che è... Aspetta, tu un attimo, vai. Sembra che sia una cosa che facciamo da generazione. <ride> Una delle poche cose positive del lockdown è che eh, ci ha avvicinato di più perché essendo tutto il giorno in casa tutti insieme ci siamo messi a fare lavori di casa come può essere cucinare, come adesso le tagliatelle, tutti insieme collaborando, imparando anche cose nuove. Ogni famiglia può decidere di, di fare il sugo che preferisce insieme alle tagliatelle perché comunque la pasta si può condire in tanti modi, magari qualcuno preferisce farle solo col sugo di pomodoro oppure con, condirle con magari del, del pesce fatto saltare in padella. Noi abbiamo preferito fare così perché è una cosa più tradizionale. This is the bar that I want to drink. So I think that's kind of how it formed around there. And I'm very happy that other people like it also. When they arrive, I'm always the one at the door. Hi, welcome to Section D, I'm Jamie. Hi, I'm Dan and I'm your bartender for today. So yeah, we have some um, signature drinks, uh, including the Irish cold brew, the sake blush, and then about the menu, what we have. And then we can also do like bespoke cocktails. I'll take the orders, go to my bartender, and then ask him to make the drinks. The most important is to, uh, for them to have a good time. Yeah, yeah, enjoy themselves, you know, enjoy a home bar experience. When we first started, I think Section D for us was really a uh, passion thing and it still yeah. is. More reason for me to yeah, drink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is where I get the recipe from. I don't use Worcester sauce and groundnut oil. I just use normal oil. It looks so delicious. And I thought mine would be also nice. Overall, I think it gives them greater understanding. It helps young people to appreciate the people serving. So I think that's very, very helpful and important. The pressing part is the funnest part. Do you prefer to fry or to bake? Uh, fry. Fry, even though you get oil on your arm. So along the way, while we are preparing together, I will always spend the time to explain to them like where the food come from and try and uh, look at the ingredients, have greater understanding. Things like, you know, if you can't pronounce it, yeah, it's probably bad for you. Uh, you can't eat too much of it. Yeah, the pandemic really gave us the opportunity to uh, have a lot more time with them than normal. So do you remember the steps how to make the pork? Mm, slice it, thigh, marinate. Mm -hmm. Uh, after you slice, remember to add the spice on it. That's the reason why we cut, so that the spice can go into the meat a little bit better. Ready to go? Yes, sir. So this recipe was developed when we were doing this thing called the bacon butt. It's a fundraising project uh, basically for the boys brigade. So Elliot is in the boys brigade. So we thought, you know, instead of flagging or going, yeah, asking people for money, why don't we do something a bit different uh, to prepare some of these uh, pork rolls and sell it. Uh. Uh, all the proceeds, 100%, goes to the um, BB, BB week uh, basically. Of course, with the pandemic, it, it was a little bit more challenging. 
So we take pre-orders and then we prepare it, a nice roast dinner for their families. Huh? We give an indicative number and then they, they just donate how much they want. Actually, most of them donate above what we ask them to, lah, so <laughs> very, very kind, right? Remember? Yes, yes. Yeah. I think I got to know him a lot better. Um, it's a work experience for me as well because it's like teaching someone at work. Except that you love the person much more. Yes, except that you, I actually love the person a lot more. Uh, so I have to learn to be patient, kind, and uh, also recognize that he's very young. Uh. Yeah, he, he's really enjoyable. Uh. Yeah. You're married already? Yeah, 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 we are married in things, isn't it? This is our signature pork rolls. I think the best memories are really, yeah, moments like this where, you know, we enjoy the fruits of our labour. Of course, most importantly, the conversation, the, the dining. I think fundamentally when they enjoy food as a whole, uh, as they grow up, I think that's very important. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Although I didn't really follow what you said. Next time when my parents or grandparents grow old, then uh, I'll be able to cook for them back because they cooked for me before, so I want to uh, repay the favour. Wow, sounds good. Great. I'll hold you to it. Uh. Yeah. We got evidence. Really. I think through cooking, we also understand their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, it helps us know them better. So we know how they will react at situations and how... I guess there's no such thing as like quality time. It's really the quantity of time that you spend with them. So the more time that we spend with them, the more we get to know them better. Uh. So I think this has certainly helped. Wow, how long has this been in section E? Slightly over a year now. I remember we were doing like team nights in the balcony here, then just chilling. And then we had like cushion seat and we just like sitting on the floor. We were the first customers of section E. We ourselves. <laughs> I remember when we first hosted our friends, like, you know, we had like eight people squeezing in this like tiny little space here, but it was so cozy. And then they left yeah. at like so late, right? I can't even imagine how eight people squeezed in here that, that time, but <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I remember that day that was that was very cozy, right? Like, yeah. It is mezcal, basically like a smoky tequila. There's milk in there for their creaminess, for their wholesomeness. I think the main thing everyone sees is the Torch Marshmallow on top. It's, it's milky, it's smoky, it's comforting, it's what I really love in a cocktail. This is the Campfire Smoke. Ice is life. The moment you run out of ice, you can't make any more cocktails. So whether you're using cube ice, spear ice, or any kind of ice, make sure you have enough of them. Glassware matters. The same reason why you don't eat your Teochew porridge on a flat plate, the same reason why there's so many different types of glassware. Whether you're using a martini glass, a cook glass, or an old-fashioned glass, make sure you're using the appropriate glassware. Shake or stir. Different types of cocktails require different types of mixing. Whether you're using a shaker or a mixing glass, find out the right way to mix your drink. To open up a space as intimate as a house, to showcase drinks that are made with our own two hands, a service and hospitality that is just purely ours, it's kind of bearing our souls also. I would go as far as to say that Section D wouldn't have happened on normal circumstances. The pandemic really gave us time to sit down, rethink what is most important for us. And we know that our home, having this shared bond together, is the most important thing. And honestly, we really enjoy staying at home and enjoying guests who share the same love of drinks as us. So I would say that the whole pandemic has... We found, we found the, the silver lining in it, I guess. 
we get this area where we can just relax and not think about all these other issues. I mean, like at the back of our minds, you know, we know that a lot of people are still, you know, suffering. But it's about keeping people together. So, like, you know, having every opportunity for ourselves to really, you know, um, communicate, enjoy, enjoy what we have, the little things in life. I think that's that's something yeah. that I really appreciate. That's yeah. my happy place here. Yeah. Fare le tagliatelle insieme alla, alla mia famiglia è stato molto bello perché eh, sono un piatto cioè, con una preparazione semplice ma con tanti passaggi. Per cui mentre qualcuno faceva le tagliatelle, gli altri facevano il ragù o sistemavano la cucina o comunque ci aiutavamo a fare tutti questi passaggi. Come eh, in un'orchestra che ognuno fa il suo piccolo e poi insieme viene fuori una melodia, il cucinare nella cultura italiana, è, cioè il cibo nella cultura italiana è una parte molto importante. Abbiamo una grossa cultura del cibo, quindi anche cucinare insieme, fare le cose che riguardano il cibo insieme, ci unisce molto. Cioè sicuramente mi ha dato una visione del siamo una famiglia molto unita e quindi se siamo andati d'accordo durante il lockdown andremo d'accordo anche dopo. Two times.